Ladies and gentlemen, you know, for many years, we knew cops had some type of immunity because they never seemed to get in trouble. Well, it's called qualified immunity. And this was passed back during the civil rights movement to keep cops from being accountable for anything really they did to us. This is the reason why Black people for all this time have not been able to legally do anything to these cops that have harmed us, killed us, and found all kinds of ways to just do all kinds of heinous things to us and we had no defense. Something like this should never exist, period, when it comes down to policing. And it also explains how easy it was for these cops to go over the top when they were dealing with us. They didn't have anything to worry about. They passed this qualified immunity. Look, if politicians in Washington want to do anything, get rid of qualified immunity for real. Get rid of it. I'm going to play this audio for you so you will know exactly what this is. The death of George Floyd at the hands of Minnesota law enforcement has put the issue of police violence and accountability in the national spotlight once again, along with a doctrine well known to the U.S. Supreme Court. Floyd's killing sparked nationwide protests against the use of excessive force by police against people of color. The demonstrations have in turn spawned more violence, with video clips of enforcers repelling nonviolent demonstrators with what some may characterize as excessive force, as President Donald Trump exhorted governors and law enforcement to dominate the streets. Those incidents, the Floyd case, and other well-known cases involving police violence in recent years have prompted a debate over the doctrine of qualified immunity, a defense created by the Supreme Court that is often successfully employed by law enforcement to stop civil suits alleging violations of constitutional rights. Qualified immunity is just one piece of the puzzle, but it's an important one when criminal charges against police are often abandoned or difficult to prove, leaving civil suits as a central avenue for victims and families to seek redress. So what exactly is qualified immunity? Where did it come from? And what is its future? 1. What is qualified immunity? The doctrine was born in the late 1960s, at the height of the American Civil Rights Movement. Federal law enacted after the Civil War had given people the right to sue state officials in federal court for violations of their constitutional rights. But in 1967, the Supreme Court abridged that relief in a case stemming from a suit against police officers by white and black clergymen arrested on a prayer pilgrimage to promote racial integration. Those clergymen had attempted to use a segregated interstate bus terminal waiting room in Jackson, Mississippi, in 1961 but were arrested for breaching the peace under a law that was later found unconstitutional. The High Court held that immunity from lawsuits is available to officials based on a defense of good faith. This case is the starting point for the doctrine we now know as qualified immunity. 2. How does immunity work? The immunity is not just a shield from liability, but protects police and other officials from having to go to trial in the first place. The Supreme Court has gone on to say that plaintiffs can't prevail unless they show that officials violated clearly established rights, including in Fourth Amendment excessive force claims. That's had the effect of blocking allegations that sometimes seem outlandish because the Supreme Court has required that there be a prior case similar enough to put the officer on notice that their conduct violates constitutional principles. Moreover, the court has said that trial courts weighing these claims can skip over the question of whether the official has violated the law and instead simply say that no prior decision says they did. That creates a catch-22, critics say, where a plaintiff can't vindicate an alleged rights violation, no matter how egregious, simply because courts have never encountered such a violation before, or have never ruled on it. 3. What types of claims get immunity? State officials, including police, have gained immunity from allegations that they stole expensive jewelry during a search, violated someone's First Amendment rights, or failed to provide adequate medical care. A pending petition before the High Court, for example, bills itself as an archetypal example of the problems with current qualified immunity doctrine. In that one, a plaintiff who had a police dog sicked on him and got bitten even though he was sitting on the ground with his hands up was blocked from suit on immunity grounds. 
The reason for blocking the suit and granting immunity was that a prior case only found unlawful police action where the plaintiff was lying down, not sitting. 4. What have justices said lately? The Supreme Court as a whole has been fairly quiet on the issue. It has mainly been Justices Sonia Sotomayor and Clarence Thomas who have spoken out. In a 2017 case, Thomas wrote a separate opinion to note my growing concern with our qualified immunity jurisprudence. In a 2018 case, Sotomayor wrote in dissent that the doctrine tells officers that they can shoot first and think later, and it tells the public that palpably unreasonable conduct will go unpunished. Justice Samuel Alito, the justice most likely to side with law enforcement generally, has been the court's biggest immunity proponent. But while Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg joined that Sotomayor dissent, very little has come out of the rest of the court one way or the other. 5. Where does it stand now? Petitions have been pending before the Supreme Court, like the police dog bite suit, which has been pending for more than a year, without the justices agreeing to hear any of them, at least not yet. They could act on these petitions any week now, either to agree to review one or more cases to signal their interest in revisiting the doctrine, or signaling the opposite by declining to review all of them. Floyd's death has also sparked congressional action to undo the doctrine, like a bill from Representative Justin Amash, I, Michigan. That would take it down once and for all. Ladies and gentlemen, this just go to show you none of these agencies in the government are no good, including the Supreme Court. You know, none of these agencies have been in our best interest at all. There should be no qualified immunity for any job in America, especially when you're dealing with the public. And now you see why these cops have gone so over the top with the black community because of this qualified immunity. Now, if we're gonna fight anything, this is what we need to fight. We need to get this qualified immunity off. No cop should be shielded from coming out on the streets and breaking the law and violating people and get away with it because they have qualified immunity. It shouldn't even be allowed. You know, we shouldn't even be having this conversation. But remember, we're not in a fair, just system. We're in this one. And this system gave cops qualified immunity to come on these streets and do anything they want to us and you had no recourse to fight them back. And that's the way they liked it. Now look at the timing of when they came out with this during the civil rights movement, okay? Just like when reconstruction happened, prisons went up all over. You ever notice anything that involves us, they know how to jump into gear and counteract it. So this was something born during the civil rights movement in order to let the police go out on the streets, do whatever they want and get away with it. And they've kept it in place all this time. So qualified immunity to shield cops from the law must go, period. It shouldn't exist. But y'all, please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.